From Glean Education, this is Ed Leaders in Literacy, a podcast series that features educators and administrators who have made hard decisions about instruction, curriculum, and intervention and school systems to close the achievement gap and build equity by improving literacy. Today, we're doing a kind of unique thing and talking about remote learning and how our schools are being impacted by that. We'll be featuring three leaders from Demarest School District in Demarest, New Jersey. Frank Mazzini, principal at County Road and Luther Emerson, Luther Lee Emerson Schools. John Regan, principal at Demarest Middle School. And Michael Fox, superintendent of Demarest Schools in Demarest, New Jersey. Um, so I've heard anecdotally from parents and teachers in your school district that your learning plan is going incredibly well. So I wanted to reach out and hear more. This is a time of real flux in our nation's education system. And I think it's really important to hear from school districts that are doing a good job and stepping out and, and being leaders in their field. So. Um, Tell me a little bit about your school district before we launch into that, and then um, tell me a little about your remote learning plan and how it's going. Uh, gentlemen, would you mind if I go first? Of course. Um, so our, our district is made up of actually uh, 700 students and population. Uh, with that, we're a three school system. So we're a pre-K one building. That's our, our, our primary grades. Then we have a two four building, which is Luther Lee Emerson School. And then we have a 5A middle school. Um, so we have two principals. Mr. Mazzini goes back and forth between the two elementary schools. So that's kind of our, our enrollment and our setup. Um, interestingly enough, uh, the Board of Education has been uh, tremendous over the years in preparing us uh, with a great deal of technology. Uh, at the same time, we've been able to afford a, an immense amount of professional development for teachers um, to be successful in the implementation implementation of technology within the classroom. So at this point, we have been one to one for many years at the middle school where the students five through eight bring the devices home. And those are Macs. Uh, at the elementary school, we just launched March 13th when we the first day we were told we weren't coming back, we launched grades two, three, four, one to one. So the second grade has iPads, the third grade has Chromebooks, and the fourth grade has Macs. So we kind of lend itself, you know, on the student device end, uh, probably uh, greater than most districts. With that being said, that's new to that school because they never went home. So we started preparing two weeks prior to the to the March 13th date where we were going to leave uh, the buildings. So the administrative team literally worked tirelessly uh, about creating a virtual learning platform that we felt would be successful, not only for students, but for staff, because it's a whole different comfort level uh, when it comes to staff implementing learning um, via devices when they're not in the building. So we created with our supervisor of child study team, supervisor of instruction as well. Uh, with the principals, we met numerous times to create a plan. The plan was to, what we're, what we're calling is uh, flexible e-learning. So our first plan was, again, not to overwhelm staff. So we asked staff to move forward with implementing a five minute instructional video and then having student do work. Uh, it's very similar to the setup of a classroom when you have an anticipatory set and you're kind of setting the mode for the lesson that particular day and then having the student do work and then the student would hand that work in. Um, currently, we're only required uh, to teach for two hours, which is called the homeschooling effect, home instruction. And with that, our staff is obviously, we're way above the four hour uh, and probably more of a four hour day versus a two hour day of instruction. And we've been in touch uh, with staff as we rolled it out, we had them included in the plan. Uh, and throughout the first week of implementation, uh, we've received you know many accolades from parents um, and staff has been uh, nothing short of amazing uh, in, in this implementation, to be fair, something that's unprecedented um, nationwide, uh, let alone us in Demarest. So, mm -hmm. and, and a great deal of credit goes to the, the principals that are here with you today. 
Yeah, so it sounds like you guys really laid the groundwork in terms of device accessibility, comfort with technology, and then professional development, which I'd, I'd love to hear a little more about that. In the past years, what kind of technological professional development were you providing and how did that lay the groundwork? Yeah, Mr. Regan, you want to address just in the fact that we also have the Northern Valley Curriculum Center, mm -hmm. how, how we operate? Yep. Um, so I guess I just first wanted to say that um, this is a very challenging time for teachers all across America. And um, for the teachers at my school, I'm so proud of the work they've been doing. Um, but that work didn't begin just two weeks ago. Uh, it is work that has been going on for a very long time. Um, so first, I want to speak to the culture of our school. Um, there's two elements to the culture of our instructional staff that I think are really important. Um, the first is what I like to call the ethic of care. Our teachers care very, very deeply um, about children and um, you know, about their educational outcomes um, and you know, treating them as really valued human beings. Um, the second part of our culture that I think is very important is the idea that everyone learns every day, right? Just because you're a teacher, it doesn't mean that your learning stops. And uh, we, we really value professional learning. So within our school, we're part of a larger consortium of schools because in New Jersey, there are more than 500 school districts. So we could never accomplish on our own uh, what we can do together um, with other schools. So within the context of the Northern Valley, there are seven townships and a an, uh, regional high school. And we have what we call the Office of Curriculum and Instruction. And so they, beyond creating curriculum, also have a professional development school. So in a given year, um, teachers can attend a whole host of different professional learning opportunities. Um, and so we usually have more than 100 offerings. And the magic of it is that they're taught by teachers themselves. So we reward expertise in teachers in providing um, that training uh, to each other. And it's something that we invest in, uh, both in terms of time and in financial resources, um, because everyone learns every day. Awesome. And Mr. Mazzini, what has been your approach in the lower grades? You run, you're the principal of the K through five schools, correct? Uh, pro, well, County Road is preschool through first and Luther Lee Emerson is second through fourth. Okay. Um, same approach, you know, as far as the rest of the district where our teachers receive professional development through the Northern Valley Curriculum Center. Also, we do a lot of in-house professional development. You know, there's always someone who is more technologically savvy than others. So for the preschool through second grades, we're using Seesaw right now mm -hmm. uh, while the students are at home. And this is uh, something that they used before um, so that it creates a, a, a larger base for communication between home and school. Um, so some of our teachers were more savvy. So they've been teaching the, their colleagues well before this ever happened. Um, but once we you know, went into this home instruction, uh, base that we're doing now, you know, the past couple of weeks, we really started working with them more one-on-one -on -one and small group instruction for the teachers. Um, and just to, you know, add to what Mr. Regan says, you know, said the students are not just the ones learning, we're always learning as well. And that was up and, you know, that goes up until this point. Um, I was just on a call now with uh, one of my teams, you know, we're learning new um, online uh, platforms to do live learning. So, you know, that's something that I've been learning the past couple of days and working with uh, our uh, technology teacher as well as our supervisor cur curriculum instruction. So I can then turn key to others on my own while they're also turning key to the entire staff, but we're trying to do small group as well. Um, you know, our third and fourth graders, they have laptops that they use in the classroom. We, use, we do a lot of work on the Google Drive where teachers can conference with them virtually while they're sitting next to them. So a lot of them are very much on the independent level right now at home. Second graders, they use the iPads quite often in the classroom, so there's a lot more independence there. Um, but you know, we're working on that independence with the kindergarten and first graders, which you know, it can be more challenging. Mm -hmm. 
And you mentioned communication early on and brings me to a question I have about how you're approaching communication with all stakeholders, with the students. How are you communicating uh, what's happening with students each day um, and then more globally? How are you communicating with you know, teachers and asking them to communicate and then parents as well? Um, I, you know, as far as in, in my role as superintendent, I'm, I'm taking part of the larger scope of stakeholders, meaning community mm -hmm. uh, and parents. So we've been sending out, um, you know, pretty much every other day, some piece of information. Um, on the educational front, you know, as far as uh, students are concerned, it's, it's been, and parents there, definitely been more principal-based and staff is kind of in a combination of both, trying to keep uh, all, all parties in the loop of uh, what we're doing. Because as we start to move forward, what we put in place two weeks ago, you're going to start to see morphed a little bit of how we change our platform and how we start to move forward. Because our plan was, we planned for two weeks for two weeks of instruction. So this is at the end of this week is the end of that. Obviously, we're going to be in, in this long, a longer period of time. So now we're actually creating plans within this week and doing further training to, to move to different platforms but making sure at the same time, most importantly for all of us is uh, our staff being comfortable in order to implement those new platforms. Mm -hmm. It's really a process of innovation. That's scary, but also exciting because it's an opportunity that doesn't always come along. Um, I've heard really good things about opening morning meetings. And I think it's, is it Mr. Mazzini who's doing that um, for your whole school? Can you tell us a little bit more about what you're doing there? Yes, it's actually both Mr. Regan and I are doing it. Okay. What we do is we film a video of ourselves, you know, good morning. We do the date and the weather. Um, we wish happy birthday to anyone whose birthday may be that day. You know, if it's a Monday and someone had a birthday over the weekend, then, you know, we'll, uh, we'll give a shout out to them as well. We usually do a few things. We give a quote for the day. Um, we'll give a joke for the day, which is quite corny, but we enjoy it and the parents seem to love it too. Um, I think the adults enjoy it more than the kids. Uh, but we also do a challenge for the day. So one of the common challenges that Mr. Regan and I did um, last week was for everyone to make a rainbow um, and to put a, a, an inspirational message on it and hang it up in a front window in their house. So when you drive through Demarest, there's rainbows hung up you know, on so many houses um, just to create a little uniformity and just to bring everyone a little bit closer together. Some people did it on their driveway, some people did it on their front stoop, but uh, it really was an awesome challenge that everyone loved. And the parents are sending both of us pictures of you know, how the kids are meeting these challenges, whether it be to make a healthy snack and some kids are making smoothies or you know, to do a chore around the house or something like that. Fantastic. How are you seeing this play out in the middle school, Mr. Regan? Um, so yes, I also do the morning announcements uh, every day and the intent is to mimic or imitate the experience of being in school. So it literally starts with like a school bell and, and we do it exactly as the morning announcements would actually sound. Um, and it includes the elements that uh, Mr. Mazzini mentioned and one of my goals is I've started trying to bring in uh, other voices of teachers. Um, so I'll have a teacher do the joke of the day and then piece it together in iMovie. Um, or uh, I'm starting to have students do say the quote of the day. Um, and what the goal really is, is to bring a sense of normalcy um, to, to this learning experience for kids so that they're comfortable and they're confident and they know that they're teachers. Um, are still here, their teachers still love them and care about them. And kind of my joke uh, about it is, um, you know, I, I am a principal, um, but I've, I've become like a YouTuber uh, <laughs> <laughs> over the past couple of weeks. Really good cred for middle school students, I have to say. This could, this could be really good. <laughs> That's great. Mm -hmm. um, I'm curious in, if you guys have uh, an approach for supporting your students in special education and what your methodology is for that, or if you're learning on the fly and have come up with any new things that are helping support your special ed teachers and your students with disabilities. I'll let one of you gentlemen answer. 
Okay. Um, so we invest very heavily um, and believe very deeply in providing appropriate services um, to children who qualify for special education. Um, so in that regard, we have seven special educators uh, in a school for 330 students, which is a very high um, percentage of um, special educators. Um, so that in, in itself is an investment. Um, and specifically during this distance learning experience, uh, we have been using video conferencing tools. Um, that is something that we have found to be uh, most, most successful. Perfect. Which ones would you suggest to other districts that have been the most user friendly? Um, so we have been using Google Hangouts. Um, that's just something that's already built within the infrastructure of um, the Google suite of packet, you know, the Google suite that we have been using for years. Um, and, you know, for all students, we also use PowerSchool. I'm not endorsing any particular learning management system. They're all pretty much the same, but that is the one that we use and that's true for all students. Um, and most recently, like many people in America, we learned about Zoom and have also been um, exploring with Zoom. Great, great. Um, anything else, any other takeaways before we close up that, you know, I haven't asked you guys about, but that you've really been impressed with or learned about through this experience? Uh, I, I, you know, because kind of, I guess in my position, I've been astonished uh, and, and proud of the work that's being done uh, by the administrative team in, in our district and, and the teachers. I mean, we're really literally building a plane while it's in the air. And, you know, it's a diff more difficult task than I think we, we even thought we would endure uh, during, during a situation as a pandemic as we're facing. Um, I think staff has been resilient. Um, staff has been working uh, 12 to 15 hour days um, to be able to implement this to the highest degree. Uh, and students, students I, I think, have been wonderful. Um, I sat in, in a Zoom class yesterday. Um, and just to kind of see their faces come to life, and they need that, right? The social socialization piece of children, we can't lose sight of, of the importance of that. And right now, that's a piece that we're trying to build back. Um, but they're, you know, they're, they're resilient as well. You know, students, I think, have been great. Um, but I, I've been most impressed with uh, administration and staff kind of coming together collaboratively, collaboratively just as Mr. Mazzini has said, you know, we're, they're all helping each other. You know, and, that, and that's really, you know, great to see from, from an administrative end that teachers are, are willing to do that. Mr. Fox, if I could just add to that, um, I also want to add the parents. Um, I think they have been, you know, they're at home doing work as well for their jobs. As many of them, you know, their offices are closed. So they're working from home while they're working with their children on the educational aspect of their life. Um, so, you know, I, I think that this, I mean, you know, just to mirror what Mr. Reed and Mr. Fox said, you know, huge, huge accolades to the staff. You know, this has been a huge learning curve for them as it has for all of us involved. Um, and they've been working so hard right now to make sure that they're giving the kids an equal, an equal love of education that they give them in the classrooms. Um, but, you know, I, I'm getting a lot of communication from parents and that's just them sending pictures of what their kids are doing at home. But I know that they're putting a lot of time in as well. Um, and, you know, Demers is a very tight-knit community. Um, educationally, they're extremely supportive, and they're just as supportive right now, and we're very appreciative of that on the parents. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yeah, I guess I would also say something very similar, which is that um, a school community is made up um, and supported by parents, teachers, administrators, and also the efforts of children. And my mind has been blown um, by the degree to which everyone has pitched in um, to make this a success. Well, I just wanna thank you for your leadership and the impact that you're having on your teachers and students and parents during this time. And um, thank you for all you're doing and keep up the good work. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you. Have a great day, Jessica. Thank you so much. If you'd like to learn more about the work they're doing in Demarest, you can visit their website. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you guys. Take Bye. care.